Hi there, in this video I'm going to make a start on the ignition for the Jerry Howell V-Twin. So for the ignition system, Jerry Howell states that uh, each cylinder is treated as a separate engine and with its own ignition system. He says it's a no-nonsense and practical system that works very well. Each hall magnet um, sensor is for a particular cylinder. The whole sensor triggers a TIM6 transistor ignition module which in turn fires um, a spark coil for the cylinder. The system operates on 6 volts and do not use more than 6 volts or try to use an automotive coil with TIM6 modules. Well I'm going to get uh, my modules from Just Engines and uh, one of the first things to do is to make a hall sensor housing out of Delrin. Now I've not got any Delrin uh, but I, I think it's just some form of plastic which is good for, as an insulator. Um, so what I've done is I've put the drawing into Fusion 360 for this hall sensor housing and uh, I'm going to 3D print this. So you can see there, that's where one of the hole sensors is going to go and that's where the other hole sensor is going to go. And inside here, there'll be something that rotates that contains one magnet, not two, but one magnet. And the angle that these are at is 135 degrees. So putting this into Fusion 360 was quite uh, good practice really, creating some uh, new planes at certain angles and, and what have you. Um, so what I'll do is I'll uh, just um, export that as a, an STL file, then I'll uh, generate the code and uh, print it on the 3D printer, but I'll, I'll do all that off camera. But what I will do is at some stage I'll put the STL file for this on Thingiverse, so if anybody else wants to make one of these um, on their 3D printer, uh, then they can download the STL file and uh, it should be a fairly simple process. I'm going to uh, print this in PETG. So the whole sensor housing retainer is made out of brass and I've put the uh, details or dimensions into Fusion 360 and uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to machine this on the uh, little CNC engraving machine that I made a while back. And this is how the two components will be assembled together. With this face here being bolted to the side of the engine. And that's how it, how it will look on the outside. So the uh, whole sensors will be there with the leads coming off. I think you make some little clamps just to hold the sensors in place as well. I've decided to make the uh, whole sensor retaining holder um, on the little CNC engraver. You can hear it putting the tabs. You just put glue in. Put in the recess. I don't know, there's a 
thunderstorm going on outside. I hope we don't have any power cuts. And uh, there's supposed to be an air show going on, so I'm not starting it in two and a half hours' time. It's a bit of a shame. So, anyway, this is cutting the outside of this retain. Well, I don't know. I've goofed up on that. The recess isn't big enough. And after further investigation, I realised that the tool that was defined in uh, Fusion 360 in the cam uh, area um, had been incorrectly defined. Uh, so my 2.5mm end mill had been defined as being a 4mm one. So I've had to make another one with the correct settings. Perfect. And now I need to make this drum to hold the magnet. So I've just turned this piece of aluminium down to 0.55 of an inch in diameter. I've drilled and reamed the end here, uh, eighth of an inch. And now I need to part it off to a width of 0.218 of an inch. Now I need to open it up with this um, 4mm 2 flute end mill. Now having just got it to that edge there, I need to go down another 90 thou So I've just touched it with a centre drill and now I need to drill right through with this number 50 drill bit. Now with this number 43 drill bit until we're at the uh, midpoint. And 
now I need to tap this 2B56, but I'll do that bit off camera. And now there's a requirement to uh, drill a hole to uh, take a magnet. So what I did was uh, drill a little hole there, as per the drawing, and now I need to cut a slot from there down to the little hole. Uh, but I'll do that bit off camera. So I've um, slipped it onto this shaft here and just um, bolted it down. And as you can see, as the engine turns now, I'll turn it right way. I'm not sure which way we go, uh, but anyway, it rotates that. So there'll be a magnet um, glued in at that position there. And uh, the idea is that that cover will go on, that will contain two hole sensors. And uh, as the engine rotates, it'll uh, fire each of the hole sensors at different times. Now, the design here calls for two separate ignition systems which actually is quite expensive um, on the hoglet uh, hoglet was slightly different we had two magnets on the hoglet and um, one hole sensor and uh, I bought a uh, uh, sort of like a, a dual ignition system from just engines for that a Rexel I think it was ignition system um, and I was thinking um, of getting sort of like a, another Rexel or two Rexel ignition systems for this not not the twin ones but single um, cylinder ones but the, the main problem with it I've just found is that the um, HT leads with the Rexel system um, the, the earth is part of the actual cap that goes over the plug so that actually means that the width of the cap is, is well it's quite wide it's too wide to go down this gap where the uh, head is and I don't want to remachine the head the, the, the other problem is um, on the Rexel systems um, the actual hole sensor is rather large so I would end up having to sort of hack it um, and replace the whole sensors that come come with those uh, ignition systems with something like this something smaller and these are the ones that come with the um, Minimag uh, ignition systems now I've used Minimag on both of my hit and miss engines and uh, they're, they're really nice ignition systems albeit expensive they're about 100 quid each and I'm, obviously I need two of them uh, but I, I, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet I think on that um, and I think it should work out quite nicely because they just fit, they'll just fit in there quite well um, so that's the plan um, I've just uh, sent an inquiry out to uh, Minimag uh, based in Isle of Wight and um, just asked them about the HT connections on here because when I've purchased, purchased them previously I've had um, different sort of spark plugs in so I just want to make sure that the uh, uh, the alligator clip uh, will work will fit with these uh, particular spark plugs and uh, obviously if they do I'll, I'll order a couple and I've just bolted this cover down and as you can see there you can advance and retard the ignition using that method so it all seems to be coming together okay it's turning inside without any issues well I think that's as far as we can go with this ignition and I'm, I'm sure people will say there's ways you can re-engineer this so it uses just one ignition module um, but I've learned over the, over the past few engines I've made stick to the design because <laughs> sometimes I've, I've changed the design and run into difficulties so I've learned my lesson 
Uh, so I've just got to bite the bullet on this one and get two individual ignition modules. And to be honest, when they arrive, I won't be able to do much with them because the ignition will be sort of pretty much sorted out on final assembly. And uh, the good news is the air show went ahead. Uh, it, um, went ahead on the Saturday and the Sunday and I think there were over um, uh, over 10 Spitfires uh, flying. quite a good event. Uh, but anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you later.